Okay, we're going to shift gears for a second and get away from infinite series. We're going to talk about Taylor polynomials and approximations. So the idea here is suppose we have a function f and we want to approximate it with some polynomial that we're here we're going to call p in this first part. So for example, suppose I had a, a, a function f. I'm just going to draw some arbitrary sort of thing. So here's my function f that we're going to approximate. And suppose we want to approximate at you know, a value c, or near c, OK? OK, well, how would you feel if I said, well, let's approximate f uh, at or near c by a polynomial that does this? Um, right? Suppose there's polynomial p. So how good of an estimate is p going to be for the function f at or near c? Well, it's not a very good approximation right there, right? So if you want p to be a good approximation of the function f, especially if we're just concerned with near a value c, what condition would you want to put on that? Well, clearly, we would want p of c to be the same as f of c, because that's not even close, okay? So the problem here is that f of c is not p of c. So this is a bad choice for p, okay? So let me try it again. Okay, here's f again. And here's c right here. <clears throat> okay, so now I want f of c to be p of c. And hopefully that will be a better approximation than the, than the one we did here. So suppose I have the polynomial p that does this. So there's p. Well, I have p of c and f of c are now the same. Right? So they are identical at c, but what about near c? How good of an approximation is p of f near c? Well, right by c, it's not so bad, but notice you get a little further away and it's a terrible approximation. Right? Same thing over here. So just having f of c equaling p of c isn't, it's great, but it's not really good enough if you have an example like this. Well, how can we fix this sort of idea? Notice f is roughly flat, and p is more, more vertical there. That's why it's not a very good approximation. So how can we fix that? The issue here is that f prime of c is not p prime of c. Again, the slope of the tangent line at c of f is, you know, is, is roughly horizontal, and the one at, at p is, is more vertical. So that's why when you get away from c, the difference between them gets large. So that, that's the problem there. Okay, well, what if we do it again and, try and fix that issue? Okay, so here's f again. <coughs> okay, so um, maybe I should exaggerate a little bit here. Let me change my f a little bit. So here's, here's f. Okay, so I want p to go through that point. So f of c is p of c. And I want the slope of the tangent line at f to be the same as the slope of the tangent line at p. So the derivatives will be the same. Okay, so the tangent line there and the other one, okay, what if I did this? So there's p. So the tangent line at both of them is the same. So both of the functions go through the same y value at c, and the derivative is the same on both. Well, notice near c, it's not so bad again, right? Near c, it's not so bad. Here we got away right away. But notice it didn't take too much further out, and we have big dis differences again. What's the issue there is that the second derivative at c is not the second derivative of p, because at f, the graph is concave up, and p, the graph is concave down. So notice it was better than the previous one, but again, you didn't get too far away, and the differences got that way. So you see what's going on here. Uh, every time the function or a derivative between f and p are the same, the better approximation we have. So what would we really want to get a better approximation? We want f double prime of c to equal p double prime of c. But then if they had different third derivatives, you expect it to be off a little bit. But notice it's getting better. Every time we set something equal, the approximation gets better.
Okay. So I say in the notes, we need P of C to be F of C. That was the first issue. Based upon the pictures above, we should also choose P so that P prime is F prime. Right. Uh, right. Etc. Et you really want as many derivatives as you can to be equal, starting with the first. So just as an example, a computational example, the problem says... Uh, find a first degree polynomial function P1. They're using the subscript one to mean first degree, so linear, whose value and slope, value means y value, and slope agree with this function tan x, f of x is tan x, at the value x is pi over four. So the, the x here is a c here, okay? And then use a graphing utility to graph f and p1, what's p1 called? Okay, and then I've added a comment there in brackets. Okay, so we're trying to estimate this tangent function with a first degree polynomial. Well, what do we want to happen? We want p1 of pi over 4 to be f of pi over 4. We want p1 prime of pi over 4 to be f prime of pi over 4. Okay, so let, let's compute f prime. Well, the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. No problem. So, we, so f of pi over 4, that's tangent of pi over 4, which is 1. And then f prime of pi over 4, that's secant squared of pi over 4. Okay, again, well, well, pi over 4 is your 45 degree angle. The special triangles are 1, 1 squared to 2. And secant is a hypotenuse over the adjacent, so secant of pi over 4 squared of 2, and that turns out to be 2. Okay, so our polynomial P1, which is linear, right? P1 stands for degree 1. So what do we want here? We want P of pi over 4 to be 1. We want P prime of pi over 4 to be 2. We want the P values to match with the F values for F and F prime of pi over 4. Well, what are we doing? We're trying to find a line that goes through the point pi over 4, 1 and has a slope of 2. Right? So, so, our, uh, so the point we want to go through is pi over 4, 1, and the slope is 2. This is just find the equation of a line with slope 2 going through pi over 4, 1. So I'm going to use a, a slope-intercept form. So y minus y1 is m times x minus x1. Uh, so if I solve for y here, I get 2x minus pi over 2, and then y is 2x plus 1 minus pi over 2. I put that in parentheses because it's a, that's the constant term. Well, I, I called it y, so this is my p1. Okay. So presumably, this p1, this polynomial, it, it, we're using it as an estimate of the tam, tangent function near pi over 4. Now, it's at pi over 4, they're equal, right? We, we designed it that way, that f of pi over 4 and p pi over 4 are the same. And in fact, the slopes are the same. Okay. So then I say, oh, use a graphing utility to graph. Well, okay, just if you have a graphing calculator, you can verify this. So we know the tangent graph is doing this, right? And here's pi over 2. And pi over 4 is here. There's the point pi over 4, 1 that's on f right here. And it's also on p1. Now, p one's a line that goes through that point, and it has a slope of 2, and it's doing this. So if you have a graphing calculator, you can see that. Notice near pi over 4, the line and the curve, you know, even from my rough sketch, look pretty good. But notice once you start getting further away, you know, you're, you're getting different. In fact, as soon as you jump over the vertical asymptote, the tangent function is way down here. And then my line is heading up. But notice near pi over 4, even from my very rough sketch, you can see there's, it's probably not going to be a bad estimate. So what do we call this P1? Well, what is it? It's the, it's the tangent line. I mean, this really is a problem from Calc 1, early on in Calc 1. Find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of f of x is tan x at pi over 4. That's what we did. Is found P1 is the tangent line. Okay, so we already knew that. We already knew that. Okay, so we can also estimate functions with higher degree. I did the P1 here because we have experience with that. So where we're headed is, you know, how do you create polynomials of higher degree 
to estimate polynomials. We just saw that the line right there near pi over 4 wasn't a bad estimate, but you got a little further away and it wasn't any good anymore. So this, uh, yeah. So again, we really want to choose polynomials of higher degree where f of c is p of c, f prime of c is p prime of c, f double prime of c is p double prime of c, etc. as far as you can go. So this, this exercise here, the next one, they say consider f of x is secant x and consider the following polynomial p2. So p2 of x, that's a second degree, it's root 2 plus root 2 times x minus pi over 4 plus 3 root 2 over 2 x minus pi over 4 squared. Okay. So again, they're doing this approximation near x is pi over 4. So if you plug pi over 4 into f and p, you'll get the same thing. If you take f prime and p2 prime and plug in pi over 4, you'll get the same thing. And if you take the second derivative, f double prime and p double, p2 double prime and plug in pi over 4, you get the same thing. So again, they didn't tell you where it came from. They're, they're just, that's what it is. They're just giving it to you. Okay, so these, the two functions agree at pi over 4, the derivatives agree at pi over 4, the second derivatives agree at pi over 4. So they say complete the table comparing the values of f and p2. So pause, pause the video here and you know, make it, fill out the table with all of these and I'll do the same thing and then we'll see if we get the, the same thing. So go ahead and, and pause the video. So the values I got for f, going from left to right, negative 1.827, 1 1.199, 1 1.214, 1 1.514, 1 1.579, 1 1.809, minus 4.704. So that's for f. P2 is 15.541, 1.216, 1.242, 1.243, 1.244, 1.245, 1.246, 1.247, 1.248, 1.249, 1.250, 1.251, 1.252, 1.253, 1.254, 1.255, 1.256, 1.257, 1.258, 1.259, 1.260, 1.261, 1.262, 1.263, 1.264, 1.265, 1.266, 1.267, 1.268, 1.269, 1.270, 1.271, 1.272, 1.273, 1.274, 1.275, 1.276, 1.277, 1.278, 1.279, 1.280, 1.291, 1.292, 1.293, 1.294, 1.295, 1.296, 1.297, 1.298, 1.299, 1.300, 1.301, 1.302, 1.303, 1.304, 1.305, 1.306, 1.307, 1.308, 1.309, 1.310, 1.311, 1.312, 1.313, 1.314, 1.315, 1.316, 1.317, 1.318, 1.319, 1.320, 1.321, 1.322, 1.323, 1.324, 1.325, 1.326, 1.327, 1.328, 1.329, 1.330, 1.331, 1.332, 1.333, 1.334, 1.335, 1.336, 1.337, 1.338, 1.339, 1.440, 1.451, 1.452, 1.453, 1.454, 1.455, 1.456, 1.457, 1.458, 1.459, 1.460, 1.471, 1.472, 1.473, 1.474, 1.475, 1.476, 1.478, 1.479, 1.480, 1.481, 1.482, 1.483, 1.484, 1.485, 1.486, 1.487, 1.488, 1.489, 1.490, 1.491, 1.492, 1.493, 1.494, 1.495, 1.496, 1.497, 1.498, 1.499, 1.500, 1.501, 1.502, 1.503, 1.504, 1.505, 1.506, 1.507, 1.508, 1.509, 1.510, 1.511, 1.512, 1.513, 1.514, 1.515, 1.516, 1.517, 1.518, 1.519, 1.520, 1.521, 1.522, 1.523, 1.524, 1.525, 1.526, 1.527, 1.528, 1.529, 1.530, 1.531, 1.532, 1.533, 1.534, 1.535, 1.536, 1.537, 1.538, 1.539, 1.540, 1.541, 1.542, 1.543, 1.544, 1.545, 1.546, 1.547, 1.548, 1.549, 1.550, 1.551, 1.552, 1.553, 1.554, 1.555, 1.566, 1.577, 1.578, 1.578, 1.579, 1.580, 1.581, 1.582, 1.583, 1.584, 1.585, 1.596, 1.597, 1.508, 1.509, 1.510, 1.511, 1.512, 1.513, 1.514, 1.515, 1.516, 1.517, 1.518, 1.519, 1.520, 1.521, 1.522, 1.523, 1.524, 1.525, 1.526, 1.527, 1.528, 1.529, 1.530, 1.531, 1.532, 1.533, 1.534, 1.535, 1.536, 1.537, 1.538, 1.539, 1.540, 1.541, 1.542, 1.543, 1.544, 1.545, 1.546, 1.547, 1.548, 1.549, 1.550, 1.551, 1.552, 1.553, 1.554, 1.555, 1.566, 1.577, 1.578, 1.579, 1.580, 1.581, 1.582, 1.583, 1.584, 1.585, 1.596, 1.597, 1.508, 1.509, 1.510, 1.511, 1.512, 1.513, 1.514, 1.515, 1.516, 1.517, 1.518, 1.519, 1.520, 1.521, 1.522, 1.523, 1.524, 1.525, 1.526, 1.527, 1.528, 1.529, 1.530, 1.531, 1.532, 1.533, 1.534, 1.535, 1.536, 1.537, 1.538, 1.539, 1.540, 1.541, 1.542, 1.543, 1.544, 1.545, 1.546, 1.547, 1.548, 1.549, 1.550, 1.551, 1.552, 1.553, 1.554, 1.555, 1.566, 1.577, 1.578, 1.579, 1.580, 1.581, 1.582, 1.583, 1.584, 1.585, 1.596, 1.597, 1.508, 1.509, 1.510, 1.511, 1.512, 1.513, 1.514, 1.515, 1.516, 1.517, 1.518, 1.519, 1.520, 1.521, 1.522, 1.523, 1.524, 1.525, 1.526, 1.527, 1.528, 1.529, 1.530, 1.531, 1.532, 1.533, 1.534, 1.535, 1.536, 1.537, 1.538, 1.539, 1.540, 1.541, 1.542, 1.543, 1.544, 1.545, 1.546, 1.547, 1.548, 1.549, 1.550, 1.551, 1.552, 1.553, 1.554, 1.555, 1.566, 1.577, 1.578, 1.579, 1.580, 1.581, 1.582, 1.583, 1.584, 1.585, 1.596, 1.597, 1.508, 1.509, 1.510, 1.511, 1.512, 1.513, 1.514, 1.515, 1.516, 1.517, 1.518, 1.519, 1.520, 1.521, 1.522, 1.523, 1.524, 1.525, 1.526, 1.527, 1.528, 1.529, 1.530, 1.531, 1.532, 1.533, 1.534, 1.535, 1.536, 1.537, 1.538, 1.539, 1.540, 1.541, 1.542, 1.543, 1.544, 1.545, 1.546, 1.547, 1.548, 1.549, 1.550, 1.551, 1.552, 1.553, 1.554, 1.555, 1.566, 1.577, 1.578, 1.579, 1.580, 1.581, 1.582, 1.583, 1.584, 1.585, 1.596, 1.597, 1.508, 1.509, 1.510, 1.511, 1.512, 1.513, 1.514, 1.515, 1.516, 1.517, 1.518, 1.519, 1.520, 1.521, 1.522, 1.523, 1.524, 1.525, 1.526, 1.527, 1.528, 1.529, 1.530, 1.531, 1.532, 1.533, 1.534, 1.535, 1.536, 1.537, 1.538, 1.539, 1.540, 1.541, 1.542, 1.543, 1.544, 1.545, 1.546, 1.547, 1.548, 1.549, 1.550, 1.551, 1.552, 1.553, 1.554, 1.555, 1.566, 1.577, 1.578, 1.579, 1.580, 1.581, 1.582, 1.583, 1.584, 1.585, 1.596, 1.597, 1.508, 1.509, 1.510, 1.511, 1.512, 1.513, 1.514, 1.515, 1.516, 1.517, 1.518, 1.519, 1.520, 1.521, 1.522, 1.523, 1.524, 1.525, 1.526, 1.527, 1.528, 1.529, 1.530, 1.531, 1.532, 1.533, 1.534, 1.535, 1.536, 1.537, 1.538, 1.539, 1.540, 1.541, 1.542, 1.543, 1.544, 1.545, 1.546, 1.547, 1.548, 1.549, 1.550, 1.551, 1.552, 1.553, 1.554, 1.555, 1.566, 1.577, 1.578, 1.579, 1.580, 1.581, 1.582, 1.583, 1.584, 1.585, 1.596, 1.597, 1.598, 1.510, 1.511, 1.512, 1.513, 1.514, 1.515, 1.516, 1.517, 1.518, 1.519, 1.520, 1.521, 1.522, 1.523, 1.524, 1.525, 1.526, 1.527, 1.528, 1.529, 1.530, 1.531, 1.532, 1.533, 1.534, 1.535, 1.536, 1.537, 1.538, 1.539, 1.540, 1.541, 1.542, 1.543, 1.544, 1.545, 1.546, 1.547, 1.548, 1.549, 1.550, 1.551, 1.552, 1.553, 1.554, 1.555, 1.566, 1.577, 1.578, 1.579, 1.580, 1.581, 1.582, 1.583, 1.584, 1.585, 1.596, 1.597, 1.508, 1.509, 1.510, 1.511, 1.512, 1.513, 1.514, 1.515, 1.516, 1.517, 1.518, 1.519, 1.520, 1.521, 1.522, 1.523, 1.524, 1.525, 1.526, 1.527, 1.528, 1.529, 1.530, 1.531, 1.532, 1.533, 1.534, 1.535, 1.536, 1.537, 1.538, 1.539, 1.540, 1.541, 1.542, 1.543, 1.544, 1.545, 1.546, 1.547, 1.548, 1.549, 1.550, 1.551, 1.552, 1.553, 1.554, 1.555, 1.566, 1.577, 1.578, 1.579, 1.580, 1.581, 1.582, 1.583, 1.584, 1.585, 1.596, 1.597, 1.508, 1.509, 1.510, 1.511, 1.512, 1.513, 1.514, 1.515, 1.516, 1.517, 1.518, 1.519, 1.520, 1.521, 1.522, 1.523, 1.524, 1.525, 1.526, 1.527, 1.528, 1.529, 1.530, 1.531, 1.532, 1.533, 1.534, 1.535, 1.536, 1.537, 1.538, 1.539, 1.540, 1.541, 1.542, 1.543, 1.544, 1.545, 1.546, 1.547, 1.548, 1.549, 1.550, 1.551, 1.552, 1.553, 1.554, 1.555, 1.566, 1.577, 1.578, 1.579, 1.580, 1.581, 1.582, 1.583, 1.584, 1.585, 1.596, 1.597, 1.508, 1.509, 1.510, 1.511, 1.512, 1.513, 1.514, 1.515, 1.516, 1.517, 1.518, 1.519, 1.520, 1.521, 1.522, 1.523, 1.524, 1.525, 1.526, 1.527, 1.528, 1.529, 1.530, 1.531, 1.532, 1.533, 1.534, 1.535, 1.536, 1.537, 1.538, 1.539, 1.540, 1.541, 1.542, 1.543, 1.544, 1.545, 1.546, 
minus 2.15 is on the other side of the vertical asymptote. The secant graph is now down here, it's negative, but notice the polynomial is blowing up. The blue graph is blowing up. So that, that explains the difference. But near power of a force, especially on the right-hand side, they sort of trace each other for a little bit until they start separating, which makes sense because the, uh, the, the secant graph is trapped on this side with a vertical asymptote. It goes up forever, but it doesn't move out. The polynomial goes up and out. So that's why you see the difference here. Right, but near power over four, it's not too bad. Okay, so now the next definition is telling you how to find these polynomials. Here they just gave it to you and they just said make some observations about it. But the, ne the next, uh, the definition tells you how to find them. Okay, so the definition says if f has n derivatives at the value c, then the polynomial p sub n which is, you find it by f of c, f prime of c times x minus c, f double prime of c over 2 factorial times x minus c squared, etc. Let me write it down and we can just, I'll just leave it. So p sub n is f of c plus f prime of c times x minus c plus f double prime of c over 2 factorial x minus c squared. And you keep going and you get to the nth derivative at c over n factorial x minus c to the n. Okay? And this is called the Taylor polynomial for f uh, at c, or centered at c, you'll, they will say sometimes. Now, a particular case, if c is zero, we call this the Maclaurin polynomial of, de of degree n. Okay? So you have to specify the c value, and then you have to specify n. So n is the degree of the polynomial you're trying to find. Okay. So in the previous example, this is how they found p2. They took the derivative, they took secant of uh, pi over 4, the derivative of pi over 4, the second derivative, etc. And that's where the form, that's where it came from, from this formula. So just, I don't have this written in the notes, I just have it as a question. Suppose, suppose your original function f was a polynomial, like you know, 4x squared plus 2x plus 1. I'm just making something up. What if I find the, start finding the Taylor, the Maclaurin polynomials for f? Okay, so if I start doing this, okay, so I'm doing c equals 0, right? Well, there's f. What's f of 0? f of 0 is 1. And now f prime is 8x plus 2. So what's f prime of 0? That's a 2. And if I do f double prime, I get 8. So f double prime of 0 uh, is 8. OK? So I, th my f is, my, is this polynomial, and I'm going to plug in here. Okay? I'm just going to do the second degree, so I'm only going to here. I want to see what the p would turn out to be. By this formula, p2 of x is f of c, which is 1, plus f prime of c, c is 0, it is 2 times x minus 0, plus the second derivative, 8, over 2 factorial, which is 2, times x minus 0 squared. And lo and behold, when you simplify, you get 1 plus 2x plus 4x squared. Notice so you get the original f. So there's no point in doing Taylor polynomials, Maclaurin polynomials, on polynomials, right? You're estimating a polynomial with a polynomial. Of course, you're going to get the same thing because they'll be exact. They'll be exactly the same, right? So we're not going to do, you know, our original function f, it, there's no point using a polynomial. Okay. Okay, let's do an example here. It says, find the Maclaurin polynomial of degree 4 for the function f of x is e to the 4x, okay? So it says Maclaurin, so Maclaurin means c is 0, right? That's what Maclaurin means. And they say degree 4, right? So we need f, f prime, f double prime, f triple prime, and the fourth derivative. So we need f prime of x is uh, the derivative of e of the stuff is e of the stuff times the derivative of the stuff, chain rule. f double prime. The derivative of e to the stuff is e to the stuff times the derivative of the stuff is another 4, so you get 16. F triple prime of x, you can see you're just going to add another 4, that's 64, e to the 4x. And the fourth derivative, remember when you write fourth derivative, fourth derivative or higher, you put in the number in parentheses. 
And that's going to be e to the fourth times another four is what, 256? Okay, now what do we have to do to find each of these numbers? You have to plug in the C value. But well, this is the way I usually do these problems. I just write the function in the derivatives, and then next to it, I do f of 0. Well, that's e to the 0, which is 1. f prime of 0, e to the 0 is 1 times 4 is 4. f double prime of 0 is 16. f triple prime of 0 is 64. And the fourth third of it, 0, is 256. Again, this just worked out nicely because e to the 0 is 1 all the way down. There's a nice pattern we could follow. Okay, so let's just fill in. Now, we, label your work. Don't just write down a polynomial. We're calling this p sub n. So we're doing the fourth degree Taylor polynomial, McLaurin polynomial. So this is p4 of x. That's what we're calling it. So if you follow the formula, it's f of 0, which is 1, plus then the derivative which is 4 times x minus 0, and then plus the second derivative over 2 factorial. Again, you can think of this as being over 1 factorial to fit the pattern. That's why they just didn't write the 1 factorial. And here you can think of this as over 0 factorial, and then x minus c to the 0, which we interpret as 1. Uh, so that's this one. And now we have the second derivative, 16 over 2 factorial, times x minus 0 squared. And then the third derivative, 64, over 3 factorial, which is 6, times x minus 0 cubed. And then 256 over uh, 4 factorial, which is a 24, times x minus 0 cubed 4. Now, I want you to clean it up a little bit. This is 1 plus 4x plus 8x squared. And 64 over 6, we can reduce as what, uh, 32 thirds x cubed. And then 256 over 24, uh, that's also 32 thirds. Because 8 goes into both of those. Okay, so it's just about, it's plugging and chugging. I mean, you could have done this in Calc 1 as soon as you knew your derivative formulas. There's nothing special about it here. Okay. So what would you expect near zero, P4 should be a not bad approximation for F. Certainly at zero, they match, right? When you plug in zero here, you get one. You plug zero in here, you get one. I mean, we knew that. And, but the first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, fourth derivative all match when you plug in zero. <coughs> okay, so that's that one. All right, let's do uh, another example. So. Number, this next one says, do the same thing, the fourth Taylor polynomial centered at c equals 2 for natural log x. Okay. So it wants to do the same thing with f of x as natural log of x. But here they want, they want this centered at 2. So when you work it out, you're going to have to have, remember, you're gonna, it's not going to be x minus 0, it's going to be x minus 2. Okay. Uh, so we're going to need four derivatives again, right? F prime is, the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x, right? Which I'm going to write as x to the minus 1, because I have to take more derivatives. F double prime is minus x to the minus 2. F triple prime is 2x to the minus 3. And the fourth derivative is minus 6x to the minus 2. Uh, sorry. Minus 4. Okay, and we're plugging in uh, C is 2. Okay, so we need F of 2, F prime of 2, F double prime of 2, triple prime of 2, and the fourth derivative at 2. All right, well, F of 2 is natural log of 2, and F prime of 2 is a half. F double prime of 2, this is minus 1 over 2 squared, so that's minus 1 fourth. Uh, 2 to the minus 3, that's 1 eighth, so 2 over 8 is a fourth. And then two to, 1 over 2 to the fourth, that's, one, that's over 16. Minus 6 sixteenths is minus 3 eighths. All right, so just compute derivatives, plug in 2. All right, so now let's construct the fourth degree 
Now, not, it's not McLaurin here, because C is two. It's the Taylor polynomial centered at two. So P4 of X, again, follow the formula. It's F of two, which is natural log of two, plus F prime is one half times X minus two. And now we have to worry about the, the fractions here. So it's minus one fourth over two factorial X minus two squared plus one fourth over three factorial, which is six times x minus two cubed, and then plus negative three eighths over, what am I up to four? Four factorial is a 24, x minus two to the fourth. All right, now we want to clean up the coefficients here. Now, uh, when we're doing these Taylor polynomials and McLaurin polynomials, we usually just leave the x minus c to the power alone, okay? You don't have to multiply that out to get a polynomial with, you know, with just x, right? So leave the x minus twos alone. So we get natural log of two plus one half x minus two minus one eighth x minus two squared plus one over 24 x minus two cubed um, minus one over 64 x minus two to the fourth. Okay, so there's your, your Taylor polynomial uh, for log x, natural log of x, centered at c equals two. Now notice if you change the c value, your derivatives here stay the same, but then your values here change. So if you change the c, the coefficients are gonna be completely different. And obviously you'd have to put x minus the new c in. So th the last exercise on that page says, approximate f, referring to this f, natural log x, f of 2.1 using the polynomial we just found. Okay, so, so again, why don't you pause the video, plug 2.1 into this, and see what you get. Okay. So when I plugged in 2.1 into my polynomial here, I wrote out a bunch of decimals for comparison sake. 7419 Okay. So the claim, now, uh, we did the polynomial centered at 2. 2.1 is not that far from 2, so you would think that the polynomial P4 would be a decent approximation for f of, of, of this value. So f of, remember, that's natural log of 2.1. That was the function f. And if you do that, the problem to ask for this, I'm just doing this so we can see how good of an approximation it is. It's 0.7419, 37, 3, so notice they match through the first six decimal places. That's pretty good. And polynomials are a lot nicer functions to deal with than, you know, your transcendental functions, you know. So, uh, I mean, log is, can, be, can be messy. But notice that this polynomial approximates through six places. Again, 2.1 is near 2, so you would expect it to be a pretty good approximation. I mean, if we plugged in, you know, the number 6 into P4 and took natural log of 6, the numbers may not be that close together. Okay. This should not surprise you that the, the estimates are close because 2.1 is close to 2. Okay, so now we've done this before with uh, in other sections. Okay, so the question is, suppose you take a function and you find a Taylor polynomial for it up to a certain degree. The question is, how good of an estimate, I mean, we just did a problem where we estimated a value of a function with a Taylor polynomial, and we saw the estimate was pretty good, but it wasn't exact. So the question is, how far off are you? So Taylor's theorem, okay, Taylor's theorem is referring to the error term, just like we've done with the trapezoidal rule and like we did with the alternating series test. So if a function f is differentiable through order n plus one, notice in Taylor, the Taylor polynomial had to be differentiable through n because we took n derivatives. So now we need, to, we need one more derivative here. So if a function is differentiable through order n plus one and an interval i contains c, so you know, wherever you're building around C, you have to be able to take derivatives near C. Then for each X in that interval, there exists a Z between X and C, such that F of X is actually equal to uh, this. F of C plus F prime of C, X minus C, plus dot 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 plus F 
n c, so it's exactly the same. Right? Now obviously f is not going to be equal to this because this is a polynomial. Oops, yeah, this is a polynomial, and that could be something weird like an exponential or log or arc sine or something crazy. Right? But there's another term here plus a remainder term that looks like this, fm plus 1 of z over m plus 1 factorial x minus c to the n plus 1. Now this right here they're calling rn of x. If you just write r for remainder, I I'm fine with that. You don't have to put the subscript. Now notice the pattern continues, right? right? It's first derivative over 1 factorial x minus c of the first. Right? Second derivative over 2 factorial x minus c squared nth derivative of c n factorial, oh, oh I forgot my n, x minus c of the n. Notice n plus first derivative, n plus first power, n plus one factorial. The pattern's the same. What's the difference though? Instead of a c in the function and your derivatives, notice there's a z here. And notice it says it's equal to exactly. Okay. So what they're saying is, if you, if you want to, like the example I just did with 2.1 for the f of x and the p4, they were close, but they weren't exact. What they're saying is, you know, it, you know, how do you make up the difference between those two? This last term there is the remainder term. And they're saying there is a z between the x and the c. So in that example we just did, remember the c value was 2, and the, uh, the, the x that we plugged in was 2.1. So there's a z between 2 and 2.1 that would make this equal to f. So again, this, this is not the function f, this is a polynomial. So the original weird function is equal to a polynomial, right? In general, those are not equal, but once you add in this extra term, you can make them equal. But again, that's at one value of x. If you change the x here, the z is gonna change. And in general, you're not gonna be able to find the z. That's the problem. It's great to say that this, this weird function is equal to a polynomial, right? Evaluated at you know c or, you know, and the x here, but then you change the numbers here. But for every x, you're not going to be able to find the z typically. Okay. So what do we want to do? We want to find what's the biggest this could ever be. All right. These are actually equal, but what we want to do is what's the biggest that remainder term could ever be? Well, you would know n. So you're going to have n plus one factorial. All right. You're going to know x. You're going to know c, and you're going to know the n again, right? So all of those you're going to know. Uh, I guess you, we really need absolute values here. Sorry, <clears throat> right? Because it's absolute value. So they say the the remain the absolute value is less than a negative number isn't going to make any sense. So you put absolute value there, all right? And then what do we want to do here, right? Since we can't figure out what that number is exactly, we're going to figure out what's the maximum that n plus first derivative could be of z. And again, z is between z is between x and c. Okay? So we know that these are actually equal for some z, but you, we can't find the z, so let's just find the biggest that that could, oops, that that, that, that could be. And again, when you're trying to find the maximum of an absolute value, you know, if this, if this expression inside the absolute value could be 6 or it could be negative 10, the max of the absolute value is going to be the 10. So usually the book is nice and they give you derivatives that are positive, so then you don't have to worry about the absolute value. Right? So it's the same game we did when we were doing the trapezoidal rule. You knew all this stuff out here, and you had to find the maximum of, of you know, that uh, second derivative, I believe. Okay. Now let's, let's do an example here, this number, this 48 here. Now I chose this one to do because what, they, it, what, what you're supposed to do is kind of obfuscated by the information they give you. All they tell you here is that E is approximately 1 plus 1 plus 1 squared over 2 factorial plus 1 cubed over 3 factorial plus 1 to the 4th over 4 factorial plus 1 to the 5th over 5 factorial. They say use Taylor's theorem, okay? This is the remainder. Be careful, Taylor's theorem is not constructing the polynomials. Taylor's theorem is talking about the remainder. And it says, obtain an upper bound for the error of the approximation. In other words, the remainder, what we were just talking about. Then calculate the exact value of the, of the error, okay? So, 
So th they say E is approximately this. Now the question is, where is this coming from? Okay, so at first, uh, all the other problems in this little set in the, in, the, in the book, it's a little more obvious what function they chose, F, what degree, clearly they're using degree five, so N is five, what the X value is and what the C value is. It's not so obvious here, okay? So I wanna explain where this is coming from. So N is five, that seems pretty obvious. Right, it's a fifth degree uh, polynomial. Now, it's not clear, but I'm, I'm, I want to show you. The function they're using is e to the x. Okay, so e to the x. c is 0, they're doing a, a Maclaurin, and x is 1. Right, now, let me explain to you. Okay, so let's pretend you didn't know any of this, and I just told you this. Okay, don't even worry about the x yet. And I said, let's find the fifth degree Maclaurin polynomial for e to the x. Okay, so ignore the x equals one for now. So let's just treat it like a problem we did a while ago, the fifth degree Taylor polynomial, uh, Maclaurin polynomial for e to the x. So f of x is e to the x, f prime of x is e to the x, f double prime of x is e to the x, goodness gracious. Okay, you're gonna get the same thing all the way down to five, right? Okay, now c is zero here, so we want to find f of 0, f prime of 0, et cetera, f fifth derivative of 0. But notice every single one of those, you get 1. So they're making it easy on you. That's why it's kind, of, it's kind of hard to see what's going on, because all the values turn out to be 1. Okay, let's construct the fifth degree Maclaurin polynomial, so P5. Okay. So if we use the formula here, right, it's f of c, 1, plus f prime 1 times x minus c, that's just x, plus the second derivative 1 over 2 factorial times x minus c squared, plus, now if we keep going, it's 1 over 3 factorial, so 1 sixth, well let me just put the factorial, because I left the factorials alone, 1 over 3 factorial x cubed, plus 1 over 4 factorial x to the 4th, plus 1 over 5 factorial x to the 5th. So there's your P5 of x. Okay? So P5 of x should approximate e to the x, shouldn't it? That was my original function, f of x. Right? So for x close to 0, near c, you expect these to be close. Now notice what they're doing. How are they getting E and how are they getting this? That's what you get when you do plug in one. That's what I was saying here. It's not obvious what they're doing, but once you see this, what's P5 of one? It's one plus one plus one over two factorial plus one over three factorial, one over four factorial, one over five factorial. And that should be approximately E to the X is one E. Right? That's where this is coming from. And it's not obvious when they write that, that that's what they're doing. So that's why I'm doing this particular example. Because you have to, n is 5 is kind of obvious, but you have to figure out what function they're using, what c value they're using you know, to construct the Maclaurin polynomial, and then what x value are they plugging in to get this. Notice there's no x here, so they plugged in a value for x. Okay, so all, I did all this to explain where this is coming from. Okay, so now the question is, how good of an approximation is it, right? So this fifth degree polynomial with x equals 1 plugged in, should be a reasonable, you know, uh, approximation. Now notice, we plugged in x as 1, which isn't, you know, it, I don't know if you'd say it's close to c or not, but it's not like 0 0.1, okay? So the question is, how far away, are, what's the error term, okay? So we want to do that. So if we go back to the theorem we just had, I don't need this anymore. Okay, so remember, what we said was the error term the absolute value of the remainder is less than or equal to the maximum of the next derivative, right? So we did the fifth derivative, so this is going to be the, si the maximum of the sixth derivative of some z over six factorial uh, times, well, let me just write it in general. Right, the formula was the max of the m plus first derivative at some z over m plus one factorial times x minus c, absolute value, e plus one. Okay, so, 
So do you understand why I had to go through all this to see that's what that is? Because I needed a function f here, and it's not clear what the function was, right? Uh, the m was okay, but you needed an OC and you needed an OX. So that's why I had to go through all this to convince myself these are the values that give me that, okay? So now let's just apply it. So what is this? Well, let's do the easy part first. m was five, so the error term is the next value, which is six. Uh, x minus c, x was one. I don't need the absolute value because it's one minus zero to the sixth. No problem. And then all we have to do here is find the maximum. Now all the derivatives were e to the x, which is always positive, so I don't need the absolute values. So we need the, the, the n plus for the sixth derivative is gonna be e to the sixth, sorry, e to the x. And when you plug in z, that's e to the z. Okay? So then remember, where is z? z is between x and c. So z is between 0 and 1. So what's the biggest e to the z could be if z is between 0 and 1? Well, e, e, to, the, uh, e to the z is exponential growth. It's increasing. So the biggest this could be on this interval is, is if z is 1. So I'm going to plug in 1 there, and I get e over 6 factorial, because that's 1. And that's approximately 0 0.0037754. So not too bad, okay? So this approximation, just using the fifth degree McGorm polynomial, uh, where x equals 1, we're off by at most 0 0.0037754 from the true value. Okay? So again, this one's just overly complicated because to do the remainder term, you need a function f. You need an x and a c, and an n, and it's not. It's the n's no problem here, but it, you know, it's not. Is it obvious? Or they put the one square one cube to make you realize you're plugging in x equals one. That was that. That was their hint, but it's not clear what the function is because they just have an e over here. So if you do e to the x and you plug in one for x, you do get the e. Okay, so that's why this one's overly complicated. Most of the problems in this section. It's clear what these are from the way they've written the problem, and then you can just go right to the step. You don't have to you know, relitigate, you know, trying to figure out, showing that these give you that, okay? Okay, uh, so then the last part says, calculate the exact value. Well, we know it, right, E, right? E is about 2.71828, right? And so how far away is this value from that value? So if I do E minus 1 plus 1 plus 1 half plus 1, third, uh, one 3 factorial, 1 over 4 factorial, 1 over 5 factorial. So I'm saying the, the true value minus my estimate, that turns out to be 0 0.001615, which of course has to be less than our maximum. Right? So the remainder is no more than 0 0.037. In fact, it turns out to be 0 0.0016, which makes sense. Okay, that should get you through section 9.7.